Good afternoon to you all. I am Vinu Sherimoon from Higher College of Technology. <coughs> Today I am presenting a paper from Relational Model to Rich Document Data Models, Best Practices Using MongoDB. My co-author is Dr. Sherimoon from Arab Open University. So this is the outline today. I will uh, start with relational databases, then birth of NoSQL databases, then MongoDB, data modeling, so a bit technical, uh, then about BSON, modeling relationships, query modeling, comparison and conclusion. So as introduction, uh, relational databases, so relational databases were there from the beginning, so I can say that uh, early 80s we had relational databases in the era of mainframes. So it was uh, before, now we are in the world of big data. So these relational databases were there before the arrival of cloud computing or big data or mobile applications. So um, almost all the applications which uh, rely on these relational databases uh, they were uh, developed to, uh, most of these applications, they were developed to work on a single server. So if you want to increase uh, the capacity of these databases, usually we need to upgrade the servers. Maybe we need to upgrade the processors or memory or storage devices. No, even though uh, the hardware, data and uh, other applications have uh, changed a lot, the underlying data management techniques remain the same. So most of the applications uh, still we have it in relational uh, databases. Now, now what is the scenario now? The world has changed. Now every one of, every one of us is talking about data and uh, we have terabytes or petabytes of, or even silobytes of data. So we, have, we are collecting a huge amount of data and uh, we have web applications, we have social media. So these applications are generating massive amount of data. So the data has increased. So once the data has increased, the risk factor also has increased. So we are uh, generating or we are collecting data from different applications. So the risk factor has also increased. Now everyone uh, wants to get things cheaper. So this is the other side. So we need or we need to have uh, the applications uh, in less amount of time and we need our applications to be available 24 by 7. So the uh, risk factor and the data has increased same time. The, we, we want it in very short period of time. So if we want, uh, if we can see that within weeks we are having uh, different versions of software. So we no need to wait for months or uh, uh, for years to have uh, the next version of software. Within weeks, uh, the businesses are upgrading their uh, software. Now let us see the birth of NoSQL databases. Now the world is, as I mentioned before, the world is undergoing massive change as uh, we shift to the digital economy. So if you take any organization, we have uh, uh, web applications, we have mobile, we have I IoT applications. Now uh, once we have all these applications, the requirements of these applications also has increased. So these applications, they need to support large number of concurrent users. So this is a main requirement. So we have a huge number of uh, consumers. Then uh, these applications must operate on a global scale. So we have uh, mu uh, many users globally. So we need to, uh, the application should be highly available globally. Then be always available. This is the requirement. Then uh, another important thing is to handle different formats of data. So we were, earlier we were uh, focusing on the structured data, but now we have uh, semi-structured and unstructured data. So we have to handle, or these applications, they have to handle uh, structured, semi-structured and unstructured data. And next is regarding the agility, agile application. So uh, rapidly adapt to changing requirements. So every time we need to change our application. So requirements are coming up. So we, our application should be agile. So we have to have frequent updates and we have to add new features. So for all these requirements, uh, we can say that relational databases can't support all these uh, type of requirements. 
So, no SQL databases are emerged as a result of the exponential growth of the internet and the rise of web applications. So, this is actually the uh, birth of no SQL uh, databases. Now, let us see what is no SQL. So, no SQL, we have different interpretations, not only relational or uh, it's non relational. So, this is a database which provides a mechanism for storing and retrieving of data which is model other than the tabular relations because we are all of us we are familiar with the table or the ta tabular relations or relational model so this is all, this is not uh, modeled in a relational way so this is a non relational model it is distributed it is open source and it is horizontally scalable so scalability is the most important feature here horizontally scalable so these no sql databases they are horizontally scalable they are open source also now let us see some uh, basic classification of NoSQL databases. We have different classifications. We have more classifications, but these are the basic ones. A uh, key value uh, data, NoSQL database, columnar, graph, multi-model, document. And uh, the right side shows uh, uh, each uh, one, 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 one example. So Redis is uh, one key value NoSQL database and uh, Apache Cassandra column uh, model. And the Neo4j, this is graph model, and ArangoDB multi-model, and uh, MongoDB document model. So in this paper, actually I am comparing relational model with the document model, and I have taken the example of MongoDB. Now MongoDB, when you take, it is a free open source cross-platform document-oriented database. It was developed by MongoDB INC in 2009. Originally, the company was 10 Gen, and later they uh, changed their name to MongoDB INC. So this was from them, and it is an open source, no SQL database. And uh, it supports drivers for many uh, programming, the uh, popular programming languages we have now, uh, Java, Perl, Python, Ruby, Scala, etc. And it is the best uh, non-relational database. So as per 2015 rankings, MongoDB is one of the best uh, with the Cassandra. This is one of the popular uh, non-relational uh, database. Now regarding the architecture of MongoDB, uh, these are the main features we have. We are, um, the right side, I will talk about the main features. It's very flexible. The schema is dynamic. And scalability and performance, the performance is incredible. We can have millions of uh, operations per second, particularly uh, in the case of big data. And it is always on and it is global deployment. Now coming to the data modeling, it's a little uh, technical. Uh, in the case of um, uh, NoSQL database or in the case of MongoDB, we call it as a collection it is similar to our table in RDBMS, and documents are similar to our records. And the schema design, particularly in MongoDB, uh, this uh, doesn't have a predefined schema, so no need to define the structure of the table first. So data is embedded as sub-documents. At any point, we can add the column. So this is like dynamic. Schema is dynamic, and we have several validation constraints it supports. Now, uh, the data uh, is represented in uh, the BSON. BSON is the binary representation of JSON format. So why they uh, use BSON? Uh, BSON supports uh, different types of uh, data types uh, than JSON. So these documents are represented in JSON. And it is sufficient for encoding and decoding during network tra uh, transmission. Now, this is one uh, uh, example of a MongoDB document. This is how it looks like. So you can see we have uh, uh, different types of uh, data inside a single document. You can have strings. We have nested document. We have integer. We have array. We have uh, geospatial coordinate. So this is one example of a MongoDB document, how it looks like. And uh, coming to the relationships, uh, modeling relationships, uh, as we know that we have different types of relationships uh, in database. So all these relationships, same, we can have it in MongoDB. But uh, the important point in relational model, we have the primary key, foreign key relationships. So in the case of uh, MongoDB, one-to-one -one and one-to-one -one relationships, we are uh, using the same document. That means the related document we are embedding inside the same parent document. But in the case of many-to-many -many relationship, we have, we have to use two collections and we store the related links. 
now these are the examples so for one to one relationship we can have the uh, document inside the parent document this is one to many relationship so for the student information the courses he study it is already embedded inside the document now this is for the many to many relationship we have two collection i mean uh, in the case in the uh, case of relational just like two tables so this is course collection student collection and uh, for the course we have an id field so this is like our primary key it's automatically inserted so if the user is not inserting the value uh, mongodb automatically insert a value there and it's a, a random number uh, it's not at all a duplicate value now coming to my query modeling mongodb provides native drivers for all popular programming languages and it uses methods or functions to call uh, or communicate with the database and then uh, regarding uh, the mongodb software we have a shell which is a javascript shell we can use this uh, shell to search insert update delete operation also recently they have provided a gui interface it is called mongodb compass we can easily download the latest uh, version of mongodb is mongodb 3.4 it's available uh, free now this is uh, the comparison so main comparison is uh, the no schema is required for document in the case of relational model schema is required and in the case of document model the data is modeled as objects but in the case of uh, relational model we know that it is a table of rows and columns and uh, document model or no sql databases they support agile applications but in the case of relational model it's not that much supportive so let me conclude so with the advent of big data applications we know that open source has a remarkable place in the software development and mongodb is the most popular and fastest growing open source database and it's used by almost all big companies like facebook google etc so once we shift to the digital economy we the developers as software developers we need to develop applications more faster and at a greater scale so these are the references i have used in my paper so thank you very much for listening